Hello, welcome to our midterm finger puppet management presentation. We are the leaders and our team production consists of Amy, Armando, Jocelyn, Jared, and Henny. And our film is called Easy Tutoring. Our show, Easy Tutoring, is a show that deals with four young entrepreneurs who open up a tutoring center called Easy Tutoring for College Students. Sean, who is the owner and creator of this company, has a team of employees which include three of his closest friends, Brian, Manny, and Daniel. Throughout the show, you will see how this tutoring business has proven to be very successful in a short period of time. However, even with the great success they have had, a few obstacles will come along the way, such as Brian, one of the main employees and friends, begins to make a bad ethical choice and scam some of the customers by taking extra money on the side without telling his boss, Sean. This will later get Brian fired after Manny decides to whistleblow and let his boss know. Afterwards, when he is fired, the company must figure out how to reconstruct the organizational structure of the growing business and lessen the load of work for some of his employees after firing Brian. The target market for our show is directed towards young professionals who just entered the workforce. And our purpose as well is to show and portray to any young entrepreneurs and newly business owners how quickly early success can definitely turn into grief. We are also trying to show the importance of creating organizational structures and how to teach staff members early on the company's core values throughout the show. We also aim to portray how young professionals should respond when faced with others who make poor, very unethical choices in the job force. Lastly, we would like to show viewers how our characters and manager Sean use management concepts as they are exposed to these challenges along the way during the show. The general idea for our show focuses on the correct and non-correct ways of acting while in the workplace and how our manager Sean and close employees will handle this situation to ensure the success of easy tutoring. Some of the concepts of Target that you will see in our show include the organizational structures, whether they're centralized or decentralized, who makes the ethical decision making in the show and who makes the unethical decision making in the show, how Sean will discuss the core values to his staff and who will violate them. When Manny chooses to use whistleblowing. Strategic management and planning. Human resource management, formulation and formulization. And the location of our episode takes place in St. Petersburg, Florida. The four main characters in our show of Easy Tutoring include Sean, who is the manager. Brian who's sort of the villain and one of the employees, Manny, who's another employee, and Daniel, who is also another employee. We'll start off our show by introducing Sean, who is one of the main characters of Easy Tutoring. Sean, a young entrepreneur in his mid-twenties who started the successful business, is the manager of Easy Tutoring. He is a young entrepreneur. One will see throughout the show that he's very hardworking. He's a great leader, logical, dedicated, focused, a go-getter, and he's very actually friendly. Throughout the show, he uses managerial skills such as planning, directing, ethical decision making, and uses organizational formulations to ensure the success of his business. We'll move along with Brian, who's another character in Easy Tutoring. Brian is a character who is conceited, young, artificial, has no mortals, and is very greedy. 
He is also in his mid-twenties and is one of Sean's closest friends from the early days. He accepted a job offer from Sean because he believed it would be great to work in a business with his best friend. However, he is the very greedy type, and he is not a good, trusting, or loyal friend. Throughout the show, he uses poor ethical decision making and goes against the company's core values and organizational structure without thinking twice. He is very uncaring and unreliable. Manny is another character who we will be introduced to in our show of Easy Tutoring. Annie is known as the good friend. He's also in his mid-twenties and grew up alongside Sean and his other two friends too. He has been known to care for his company's core values, organizational structure, and formulation, and throughout the show one will see how he whistle blows in an episode. He is very intelligent, a young entrepreneur, hardworking, analytical, well-spoken, and very loyal and trustworthy. Lastly, we have Daniel, who is another character in Easy Tutor. Daniel is one of the other employees and close friends to the rest of the guys and is also a very hard worker who believes in working hard in order to succeed. He's sort of a laid-back friend and employee. He's personable, hardworking, logical, practical, punctual, and very appreciative. Toward the ending of the show, one will see how he's such a hard worker but has taken on so much that they will reward him for being such a good, great worker. Easy Tutoring will be broken down into seven episodes that will illustrate different management concepts that both the manager and his employees will face throughout the show. Episode 1, The Nature of Management, will include an introduction to Easy Tutoring. Episode 2 will show various planning and strategic management skills and will also include a non-program decision. Episode 3 will show how Sean makes organizational structures and designs for his company and it will also include someone who goes against the core value. Episode 4 will show how Sean uses his managerial ethics and how many whistleblows to make the right choice. Episode 5 will show an organizational change in planning and how they will restructure the company after Brian is fired. Episode 6 will deal with strategic planning and how they formulate a plan, and Episode 7 deals with a very big decision making. Episode 1 begins with the cast inside of Easy Tutoring's building. In this scene, Sean is with his three other staff members, and he is congratulating them on how much they have expanded the company in such a short period of time. Sean was able to do this because he uses planning skills where he estimated future conditions and circumstances. He directed his staff and influenced them, which helped them with their success of the company, and he organized their resources. Because of all of their success, they were able to expand their office from one room to seven rooms in the building. While all of this is happening, Sean proceeds to walk with the three other gentlemen to show them the rest of the room that they have expanded. However, a young woman walks into the scene and asks to speak with Brian. Brian nervously rushes her to her room and tells his friends he will meet them later. This girl tells Brian how she wants to hire him to take one of her classes for the rate that he has set. Brian accepts and charges her. He has been taking money on the side and not letting the guys know since the company is growing and feels that it wouldn't really hurt them financially anyway. This sets one of the challenges for the show. Episode 2 will focus on a non-program decision that Sean must make when presented with an issue that the company has started to face. This episode will also show how an unethical dilemma has continued to rise throughout the episode and the rest. In this episode, the scene opens with Sean working on his computer and thinking about how cool it would be to purchase brand new equipment like high-tech computers. He feels as though, since he expanded the company, he should invest money back into it and purchase the equipment. However, Sean then proceeds to walk into the main hallway and Daniel approaches them, telling them that he overheard a staff member say how horrible their furniture was 
and that they should have purchased more furniture since the company has expanded. This is an example of a non-programmed decision because it, this decision is about a problem that is very novel. Daniel tells John that he agrees with the other staff and that their furniture is very crappy and inadequate. If they expanded so much, they should be able to use some of their savings to buy more furniture. Manny then comes into the scene and hears the conversation and agrees with the other employees as well when Sean asks them what they should do about it. Although Sean wanted to buy high-tech computers, he makes a non-programmed decision and agrees to buy the furniture for the sake of the employee's comfort. He did not know that there was a situation with the furniture and how complex it was. He had to weigh the outcomes for the decision, which which was to use some of their saved funds to purchase this expensive equipment. After Sean decides to buy more furniture for his company, Manny, Daniel, and Sean walk over to the room where Brian is working. Brian sees all three men walking into the room and gets very nervous and minimizes the work on his computer. He's actually working on a class for a student and getting paid extra, something that is extremely unethical. Sean informs him about the decisions he's made and tells him that they will use some of the company's hard-earned money to buy the furniture for the comfort of everyone. Brian says that's a great idea and not want to feel bad about the decision he's making, although he's going against the company's values, organizational structure, and does not care about the magnitude of consequences, which is the anticipated level of impact of the outcome given of the action. Episode 3 of Easy Tutoring will focus on the organization structure and human management resources. This episode starts off with Sean and the rest of the cast in a conference room where Sean will be going over the formalization of the company's organizational structure, which includes which tasks are divided amongst two, and also goes over the core values of the company, which include their behaviors, attitudes, and outcomes that are expected of all of the employees, including the, these three. Sean expresses to them that since the company is growing due to the demand of tutoring their students, they should let their employees know about the importance of always maintaining the core values and staying true to the company's vision, because he cannot be on top of every single employee. He will then talk to them about how more jobs will be created. Afterwards, when the meeting concludes, he tells everyone to go on with their day. Before leaving the room, though, Brian proceeds to ask Manny if he can have a word with him. Manny says, of course, and the scene moves to where Manny and Brian are talking at his desk. Bernie offers Manny a business proposal where he talks about how he's making extra money on the side. That is not tax, and he gets to do a lot less work. He tells Manny that he is taking a course for students instead of tutoring them in person and is charging them an extra fee. Manny interrupts Brian and tells him that what he is doing is extremely wrong in crossing the line of authority, which is shocked. It goes against the company's values and the organizational structure that their boss and friend had just won over in the meeting. He asked him how he could do such a thing, however, Brian tells Manny that this way of earning money is a lot easier, and he should consi consider doing it. This episode ends with Manny scratching his head with confusion, because he knows what the right thing is to do. Episode 4 of Easy Tutoring focuses on the concept of whistleblowers. In this episode, Manny is forced to make a decision on whether or not to turn in his friend Brian for the illicit scam that has been going on unbeknownst to everyone. The decision that Manny ends up making is to turn in his friend Brian to their boss, Sean. By doing this, Manny essentially becomes what is known as a whistleblower, that is, someone who informs on a person or organization that is engaging in immoral, illicit activity or unethical choices, which is what Brian has done. So after Brian tells Manny of his business scam, he leaves the scene thinking that Manny will join in after he tells him how much money he's making. But to his surprise though, Manny does feel really bad about the meeting since Sean just went over the company's core values. Manny decides to tell Sean what is going on. When Sean finds out, he calls Brian into his office. In this episode, Sean proceeds to fire Brian. And afterwards, he showers Manny in praise because he knows how difficult decision for Manny it was to have made this decision and turn in his front, knowing that it could get him terminated. After this conversation has ended, Sean talks about Manny to Manny about how important it is to be a whistleblower. Episode 5 of Easy Tutoring deals with the concept of organized structures, centralized organizations, and decentralized organizations. 
This episode takes place shortly after the incident that involved Brian getting fired from the company. In this episode, Manny feels that not only because he has gained Sean's respect, but also because he truly cares about the company that he would be able to be more productive of a work for the company if he were to become an assistant manager to Sean. Because of this way that Manny feels, he decides that he is going to ask Sean for a promotion. When Manny goes to Sean to ask about his promotion, he brings up the point that there are organizational structures that are more centralized and there are organizational structures that are more decentralized. And right now, because this company is in a position where there is only one manager, it is a very centralized structure, which is a case where most of the decisions are made at the top of the company, and not necessarily by the people who will deal with the repercussions of those decisions made. In this case, the person that is making the decision is Sean, because he's the only manager. Manny's argument, though, is that he gives it that if Manny were to be made assistant manager, it would, in a sense, slightly decentralize the structure of the company, and in this case, Manny would be able to make decisions for the business. That would be better, because Manny is the one that deals with the customers at first hand, usually. Manny points out, as an example, that they could organize your company in the same way fashion to Amazon, which, with one person at the very top, but other people just below them, on the hierarchy with certain responsibilities delegated to them. And in this case, with Sean being at the top and Manny being just below him on the figurative chart. After hearing Manny's argument, Sean does agree that it would in fact be the best decision for the company to have this organizational structure put into place. Episode 6 of Easy Tutoring will focus mainly on the idea of strategic management and strategic planning for the business and why it is so important. In this episode, Manny is now an assistant manager working directly underneath Sean, and because of this change, things are running smoother than ever for the business. In this episode, Sean and Manny, as the two managers of the company, are having a meeting to discuss what kind of strategic management techniques they can employ. The first thing they mention in this meeting is they point to this crime for this episode are the steps that are involved in the strategic planning process. So Manny will say to Sean that three steps are involved in strategic planning are formulation of a plan, followed by implementation of a plan, which is then followed by the evaluation of a plan to make sure everything is working fine. Manny mentions that they are currently in the formulation state of the plan because they are trying to create it with this meeting. After a lot of back and forth between the two managers, they will eventually come up with a plan to offer a discount to current tutoring students if they are able to bring in a new student for the company through a referral system. Sean points out with this act that with this plan, as with any other strategic business plan, they have to be wary of outside environmental factors that may play a part in this, such as other tutoring companies that are in competition with them. However, they want to create a competitive advantage in order to win consistently with this plan over other businesses. They then agree to implement this plan with the contingency that they may want to back out if the plan, however, does end up costing the business more money than it makes for them. Sean delegates the task of monitoring the cost effectiveness of the strategic plan to Manny and gives them the full right to stop offering the referral discount if the plan does not go through as a success. The meeting ends with Manny goes to tell the other employees and Daniel about the new policy that will be implemented in the near future. The last episode of Easy Tutoring focuses on that of decision making processes, both the individual and group. In this episode, the company is forced to make an important decision. The dilemma of the vacant spot left by the termination of Brian is brought up to Manny by Daniel. Daniel feels that since Brian's determination, his workload has doubled, but his pay is still the same, and it does not seem fair to him. Daniel decides to bring the issue up to Manny and be straightforward with how he feels. Manny responds by apologizing for the issue and telling him that he will look into it with Sean, and reassures Dan Daniel by telling him that they will be able to resolve this issue in a timely manner. Manny then goes to Sean to bring up this issue with Daniel's workload. Manny and Sean then discuss their options that they have in front of them. The option being to hire either a replacement for Brian's position and pay to have him trained completely up to the company standards, or give Daniel a fair rate that accurately, accurately represents the increased workload that Daniel has picked up. In this conversation between both managers, Manny brings up the type of decision-making process that they're using, which is the bounded rationality model, and gives a definition for it. This definition is that the bounded rationality model for decision-making is the idea that decisions that people make are essentially limited to the amount of information they have. In this case, Sean would mention that the information they have is that it is very costly to hire a new person and train them up to the company standards. 
and even if it is not a guarantee that they will actually want to stay with the company, because if they left the company, then all that money and time for training would have been a complete waste. The other piece of information that they know, though, is that Daniel is a very hard worker who has proven himself through years of experience, and that his loyalties do lie with the business. Sean and Manny then come to a mutual agreement to give Danny a raise that is actually slightly higher than what Daniel originally asked for with the intention to share Daniel's contentment with his current job. Manny and Sean then exit their meeting and Manny approaches Daniel to give him the news, to which Daniel replies, very happy. This final episode and show ends with everyone being happy and working together to help the company rise even more despite any of the challenges that may have happened throughout the way. The end. So far, our group has completed milestone one and two, the design challenges and this midterm presentation. What needs to be done for the rest of the semester is we need to finish filming episodes five through seven and complete milestone three and four. We also need to complete the finger puppet management booklet and final presentation of the show. We hope to do so. 